Today I've travelled to Milton Keynes, I'm at Douse Engineering. Now this company, in fact we've been here before about four years ago looking at some of their Matsura machines amongst other plant including their use of CAD CAM or Hypermill software. Today this is really interesting this one, I'm going to be speaking to Steve Walker about this Cublex machine behind us, they've got two of them. Uh, this is the newest one. Steve, we've looked at a lot of MAM72s, 5-axis palletized machine tools. What's different with the Cublex? Well, the main difference between this and the MAM72 is it is a MAM72, but it has the turning capability. So not only is it a fully 5-axis machine tool, all the Matsura normal specifications, but we have the capability of turning at the same time as milling, so we can turn a little bit, mill a little bit, turn a bit more, mill a little bit more. And how much has that made a difference to your production? Oh, it's huge amounts because we're not backwards and forwards in from milling machines to lathes. It's a, it's, it's a huge, huge time it, saving. It kind of must have turned everything on its head. You must have looked at components and thought, actually, we don't need that machine anymore. We can do everything here on, in one hit. Yeah, I mean, we, we bought the machines mainly for, for one customer that to kind of demanded that their parts were turned rather than the conventional way of milling things where you don't, you know, everything's not concentric exactly, you're not getting round holes. So yeah, and from there we kind of progressed onto other things and we looked at things in a slightly different way. It was like, oh, it'd be much quicker if we could turn that profile on rather than ball nose in the standard, spinning it around with a ball nose. Could take 20 minutes or so when a simple turning operation could take two minutes. And so, yeah, hell of a hell of a time saving. And you're much better turning than you are ball nosing anyway, as we all know. Oh, surface finish wise, yeah, a, a turn finish is, uh, you know, it's, it's like you can get it like a mirror. You, you can't achieve that with a ball nose, not without substantial time going into the job. So, what about the actual accuracy of the parts as well, and the, and the non-scrap issue? Because there must have been times where you take a part off one machine and put it onto another machine, you're, you're introducing the possibility of, of risk, aren't you? Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, as soon as you take it off of one machine and you put it onto another one, it's an, it becomes another setup. So inevitably, there's some sort of an error, um, whether it be the fixture in or whether it be discrepancies from the lathe to the milling machine. Generally, the first component, you generally throw away. On a milling machine, when, when you're doing the turning at the same time, you know, you can take a semi-finished turn cut measure and you could take a semi-finished milling cut and measure all at the same time so the scrap rate goes down it also improves just about everything from the workshop onwards accuracy is greatly improved because as long as the kinematics of the machine are good the, the finished part is, is good. Um, what about the tooling element because we know that the the MAM machine, the five axis milling center has uh, a lot of tools in it, but now you're adding more tools in for turning, aren't you? So, um, you know, have you got enough tools now to satisfy both operations? Yeah, well, that's the beauty of these machines. Um, obviously the Matsura machines, when you buy them, you specify a certain number of tools, but they're probably one of the only machine manufacturers on the market where you can expand that tool base. So we started off with, on the first Cublex, for instance, we had a 120 tools and we dedicated 20 turning tools out of that 120 now we're up to 240 on there um, still with the same 20 turning tools because a turning tool is more versatile uh, to external finish turn something we only need one tool whereas milling wise you'd probably need half a dozen for different depths so yeah, I can see that now let's look at the tool as well if you want to pick these two up Steve yeah, just so the yeah. camera can yeah. Look at I mean, so, th th these are your turning tools. That yeah. It's using the same back end, of course. Basically, it's a HSK 63 back end. Uh, there's, a, there's a designation T on the end, which means that it's ground to a much, much higher tolerance. Um, so when it goes into the spindle, it's actually locked because obviously with turning, you don't want it orientated differently. But yeah, this is our, this is our finished turning tool. So this is, this is what we would go across the face of a job with. Um, we would go down to a certain depth, if the, if the part was longer we would turn the table at 90 degrees and come in that way. So yeah, it's very versatile. Um, That's interesting, yeah, so you can also tip your A or C axis or whatever it would be in order to change the, the direction of the turning. Exactly, yes, we, we can turn with the table uh, flat in the machine so that the part's spinning this way, or if the part's slightly longer and we still want to use this, 
we would turn the table at 90 and the tool would come in along along the length. And from your experience with that locking mechanism, does it have as much stability as other turning centres you'd be using here? Can you take as deeper cuts? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure because it's not something that we practice. Um, we like to take smaller cuts to maintain the accuracy of the machine. We could probably push it a little harder. Is there anything that it hasn't managed to do would probably no, be a better question? No, not at all, no. Everything that we've asked of the machine, it's, it's been up to. Uh, we, we've pushed it quite hard sometimes. Let's look at this other tool here then, because this... Uh, right, yeah, so th this, would, this would is what we call an internal grooving tool. So if you was on a, a, a normal man, for instance, and you had some grooves, you would have a T-slot type cutter and then you'd have to interpolate your groove, you know. With this, the part spinning just comes out, gives a really nice finish. You get the radial finish that a lot of customers desire. Uh, yeah, and it's also so much quicker. Uh, what's interesting for me here as well is the Cublex machine um, is a big investment, in, equally as the MAMS, but they're, they're very productive tools. But for the additional money, it seems to me like it would be a no-brainer to have this turn-in functionality on it, because the majority of components do go through, in a lot of instances, a turning element before a milling, don't they? Oh, yes, of course, yeah. Um, if we were in the market for another five-axis machine with the capabilities of a MAM, there's no doubt in my mind that we would buy a Cublex instead. It's pre predominantly a milling machine, exactly the same as the MAM, but it gives you that extra dimension of being able to do the turning as well. Tell me about how useful having the 32 pallets on these machines are for you as a company. Well, for us as a company, what we do is um, we load all the pallets up and we, we do all of the non-essentials. By the non-essentials, I mean any roughing, any sort of finishing that is not critically tied up dimensionally wise. We run that unmanned lights out at night or over the weekend. And then the finish operations, it still remains on the pallet. We take it back into the machine and we do all the really critical tied up work while, while someone's here to keep an eye on things. Because any machine tool, you get very slight variations during the day. They're very stable, but the tolerances we're working to, 10 microns on diameter, is uh, it's quite difficult to hold. Uh, what about the uptime for these machines? You, you said you do a lot of the, the grunt work overnight. Does that mean that you are really, well, these spindles are, are, are turning, you know, most days and most nights of the week and the year? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's 168 hours in a week. Um, we, we have projects that we've done in the past and we, that we're, we've got repeating again, where we need to keep these machines pretty much turning all of that time. So whether it's been the roughing out, the, the non-essentials, and then during the day, we're doing the essentials, which is where the money is, because that's when it's near the end of the project. So It's also interesting to find in your business, you're not specifically allied to one machine tool supplier. You have a variety of differing brands here, but that also gives you the opportunity to find out which ones are the most attentive to your needs. Um, where do Matsura fit in, that, uh, in amongst the others? Well, uh, for me, I've come from a Matsura background. I've been using Matsura machines for uh, a lot longer than 20 years now. Started off on three axis, twin pallet, RA3s, went to the horizontals, and now we've got these. I think with the Matsuras, what, what, what Matsuras give you over and above a lot of other machine manufacturers are, they are purpose-built for dedicated lights-out machining. They're designed from the ground up with palletization, a large number of tools in mind from the outset. A lot of the other tool manufacturers are bolt-on, so the machines are not designed with pallet palletization in mind initially. They're more of your single table, one part on there and that's it, and then load it over. That's where the Matsuras do have the advantage, um, especially with the expandability of the tooling. Um, that's, Sounds like that's very good certainly made for purpose. So there, here we have it, Matsura taking machine into another dimension here. We look at the, the MAM, and as Steve correctly said, this is a MAM machine, but it's the Cublex, and it's now added the turn-in uh, feature to it. So uh, very much one-hit machining. Thank you very much, Steve. Yeah, no problem at all, anytime.